Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event or a webinar, a webcast, an online show, whatever you'd like to call us. Um, you can call us whatever you want, but we're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, however, that's no problem. We do have, record our show every week. So if you um, miss a show or want to just go back and see what we um, have done previously, you can go to our website and into our archives and see recordings of all of our previous episodes of the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. We do a mixture of things here, um, presentations, interviews, book reviews, uh, mini training sessions, um, basically anything library related, we are um, happy to have it on the show. Um, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations about things we're doing here at the Commission or through the Commission, but we also do bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have today. Um, on the line with us is uh, Connie Jelkin and Kelly Melson from our Kearney, Nebraska Public Schools. Hi, guys. Hello. Good morning. It's nice to see everybody or hear everybody today. <laughs> Good morning. Um, and um, they have a presentation for us. This is something that I saw they had done at our state library conference uh, last fall, our Nebraska Library Association and School Library Association conference, um, about this great program for trying to get the kids more into using the library, learning how to use the library. So I invited uh, Connie and Kelly to come on our show here and share it with um, more people. So um, I'll just hand over to you guys to explain exactly um, what you guys did. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you this morning. Kelly's going to do some introductions for us. And if we can get our slides to work. There we go. There we go. We have something to share with you this morning. We're going to start with a little bit of humor. Um, those of you that have seen this before, we apologize, but we think this is a great 21st century library joke here. Hello, I'd like to order french fries, a burger, and a milkshake. This is a library. <laughs> yes, yes, we all know what we go through every day as librarians, and so um, <laughs> luckily we work with fifth graders on this project. So we did produce this as a whole media team. We have other members that just aren't presenting with us this morning. And so in Kearney Public, we work as a team. These are our elementary school librarians that are listed here. Connie and I are just presenting it this morning. And I would add to those people who are uh, in a library by themselves that uh, nowadays with uh, Google sharing, it would be pretty easy to find comrades to share with. Uh, we love working with a group of people and bouncing ideas off of each other. Uh, Kelly and I just happen to be the ones that uh, they designate as the talkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we will share this project with you at the end of the presentation also. So to get started, now uh, here we are in Kearney this morning. And the overview of the project is an adaptation of an old game of encyclopedia search cards. They were printed. And so what we did, we took the old cards and we updated and we expanded them to include 21st century skills. And then we also got in Garner's multiple intelligences too. So what it is, is the students paired up, race around the world, solving challenges that we give them but they have to use our current library resources. And so we're going to look at these 21st century learning goals first. This is the American Association of School Librarians, and we teach to these standards. Any, any lessons that we do, we try to tie to these standards. And so this is what students who are information literate can do in our schools. I will let you read these on your own. Kelly says that we try and uh, match up what we teach, but it's really a uh, back and forth process. We look at the standards and come up with ideas that would 
match these standards too. So some ideas we try to match, some we look at the standards and try and match the ideas. We work back and forth uh, with these standards all the time. And we have a second page of these. We have found that uh, many of our projects adapt easily to these 21st century learner skills, uh, things that we were doing anyway, things that we worked in the library on a daily basis. Uh, we just have to tweak them a little bit so that they match up uh, the way uh, the standards present them. And you'll notice that these are numbered 114 and 118. We have the link to these at the bottom here, the learning standards are posted online at the AASL website and they can be down they can be downloaded it is a PDF the entire booklet that you see on the right is downloadable as a PDF so if you're interested in getting those they are online it's not large either so it's uh, we've printed them up and keep them in our little uh, book bags or desks because it's an easy reference it's more of a flyer than it is a book and for anyone that's on so the line like this well, for anyone that's on the line I just yeah. you know um, as we do with all of our shows um, I'm looking up all the links for all the this these standards and they'll be included in the show notes afterwards so if you, you know don't want to try and scribble down that long URL there um, that's okay we'll have a quick link for you at the end thank Once you very much available yeah and so we are getting real good things done. The kids think this is just a fun project, but we really know what's, what is really behind all of it. So let's talk about Garner's multiple intelligences a little bit. Um, if you've been in a master's program lately, I mean, Howard Garner, ha since 1983, has been studying the brain. So he believes that all human beings have multiple intelligences, and then these can either be nurtured and strengthened or they can be ignored and then they grow weaker if they get ignored. So we try to use his theory and teach to the different types of learning that kids do. And so there's nine multiple intelligences in his theory. Verbal linguistic where it's a verbal skills, sounds and rhythm of words is used. The mathematical or logical intelligence where it's a conceptual ability to think about number patterns. That musical intelligence, always rhythm, pitch, and timbre, and the ability to produce music and appreciate those things. The visual spatial intelligence is the capacity to look at images and visualize all kinds of pictures. And the body kinesthetic is the ability to control movements and also to handle objects. Uh, those of you that work in the school, you will know that some students are stronger in each one of these than others. Uh, some students love to work with pictures, some students love to do the physical thing. Uh, but uh, Gardner stresses that we should try and uh, create activities or um, lessons that uh, reach out to students to, so that they can strengthen every one of these. Yeah, and so there's four more there, the interpersonal, moods and motivations of others, the intrapersonal, where you're in tune with your inner feelings. And the last two we did not hit in this project, the naturalist, where you're in nature and you recognize all kinds of outdoor and um, nature things, and the existential. We didn't, we didn't really use those two intelligences. Um, it's uh, pretty much a matter of time, too. When we get a little further down in our slides, you're going to see our thinking process, and uh, this uh, will become just a little bit more clear. So here's the goals. We wanted fifth graders that are leaving us and going to middle school to apply the skills that they've been learning since kindergarten about how to use our resources that we provide them in Kearney Public Schools. And so we wanted to ensure that they could use all those, both print and online. You'll see students using print dictionaries. Well, they really need to keep that skill right there um, current 
And so we have them go back and use a print dictionary. And collaboration is also one of the goals of the project. And we want them to take charge of their own learning. And we're trying to create lifelong learners also. Along with that lifelong learner aspect, we wanted to make this learning um, in depth, we wanted to make it fun so that the students can carry the fun of discovery with them. So here you can see that uh, we applied our library 21st century skills to gardeners. We heard, here's, here's where we did the blending. And you can see we've got the gardener skills listed. The first one is the visual spatial. And then we thought up things, what can we do in the library that would address this particular multiple intelligent? And you can see some of them are white and have names beside them. Uh, that was the person that was in charge of developing that particular card. And then you see some that are black. Those are ideas that we came up with, but we didn't use. <clears throat> so here's musical, the kinesthetic, verbal, Linda. You just We went through all the intelligences and thought up things that we could apply to each one of these particular skills. You can see that we've got ideas that we could expand this project with, um, but uh, truthfully, it took the kids quite a while to do the project the way it was. This is actually the answer to that. Yeah, uh, Kelly's pointing out that escargot um, hopscotch is one of the answers that the kids have to find. Um, we did not require them to put it on the floor and jump through it, but uh, they could but it took them a little while to figure out um, that we wanted the French one to begin with, and then it addresses the body kinesthetics uh, where it says the full body movement. We're trying to apply the skills as we go through. And there you can see we did not get to naturalist and existential. Uh, we did not eliminate those, eliminate those for any particular reason. We just had um, 12 different cards to start with and that we thought was a good starting point. So there's no reason particularly those were left out. They just were at the bottom of the list for some reason. It would be easy to expand and include those. Now when we get to organization, <clears throat> we divide the kids into 12 teams. Here in Kearney, our, our classrooms tend to be around 24 to 27 kids. So we divide them up into 12 teams of two each. Uh, that's just the way we did it. It does not have to be that way. Uh, each team has the same 12 challenges. And you can see there's a picture there of the envelope. We've got the challenges printed up and they're in an envelope. At uh, challenge one, uh, we decided, and this was just a decision that we made, all the students in their search around the world were going to start in Kearney. So we made a challenge card. Let me flip to that so you can see. We made a challenge card uh, where our groups start in Kearney. And they had to find things in Kearney. Kearney here has um, UNK, Kearney High, Kearney Catholic, and the Tri-City Storm. Those are all sports teams that are in Kearney. They had to find the mascot for each one. Uh, the Frank House is a historical building that is in Kearney. So they had to look up and find information about the Frank House. Kearney has several parks. Um, our particular park map has a, um, the ability to look up and see where you can play disc golf. So the students had to find the parks. They had to find the map. They had to discover where you could play uh, disc golf. And then um, using the computer, they had to take a picture, a selfie picture of themselves, um, which was a huge amount of fun too. But you can see how all those cards then get put into the envelope and we have rearranged them. So each each group, each of the 12 groups starts with the same first card and then after that the same 12 challenges are in a different order. So some students will be doing one challenge, some will be in a different challenge. So they're not all at the same place same card. So it's hard to tell who's ahead is what our plan was. And we didn't want all 12 teams at the dictionaries at the same time. So our kids are spread out. Uh, they're spread out um, throughout the library. But having said that, all of the kids have to do, all the teams have to do all 12 challenges. Then you can see this is what it looks like when you start. We uh, created or found 
on Google these avatars. We needed to have 12 and each envelope then has the avatar on it so that you know where your challenges are. You're divided into Team Parrot or Team Giraffe, whatever it happens to be. These we found doing a Google search, so we have to give credit to Google there. And this is what a sample card looks like. Um, you can see each team, each card has the team mascot, team avatar on it. This one has supposed to be a parrot. Uh, it happens to be that parrot challenge number seven says that you have arrived in London, England. We tried to make um, a fun little travel. Um, it just didn't not to just say, okay, it's time for you to make up something here. And we tried to have the kids think that they were traveling throughout the world. So here you're in England and it's time for high tea, but you have to improve the word choice in a popular children's song. So you have to look up in the dictionary and the thesaurus words to change. I'm a little teapot, and it's kind of hard to see on the a picture here, but little short stout handle steamed, shout, tip, pour are all bold. And that indicates the words that the students have to then look up and change the words. Uh, then, let's uh, see, at the very, very end it says, to end this challenge, you have to sing and perform your new song for the Sherpa. I'll tell you what the Sherpa is in a minute, but that is going back to the gardener's uh, um, in multiple intelligences, the students actually had to sing and perform. And we got some great, cute performances, I have to say. <laughs> some of them had to go practice a little bit. They did practice. <laughs> then they'd have to come to the Sherpa, which I'll tell you in a minute. This is the organizational team passport. This is folded into four ways so that you know, you're seeing it flat. But you can see there, there's the challenges. and. Um, after each challenge, um, it's kind of upside down right now, but in challenge one, when the students performed or, or completed challenge one, then some of us stamped them like you would stamp a passport. Uh, my stamp didn't work very well, so I had stickers that I just put on there so the students would get stickers on their passports. Um, some of us in our libraries gave each student their own passport. Some of them had uh, team passports, but this particular piece was printed up and handed out to the students. <laughs> some students worked together and some students didn't work together very well. You can see by the pictures that the teams sometimes weren't happy. The upper left hand uh, team was real, not real happy with the choice that they got and the lower left, oh, they're best friends. How, how neat they got together for this project. But, um, during this time, pairing the students, some of us, some librarians, went to the classroom teacher and had the classroom teacher pair the kids up. But some, I myself used a random name generator that you can use at teachertools.com. And we've got that link for you too that will show you. Um, it's just another way to pair students up um, to just do it randomly. So, And those of you who work with classrooms know that some students uh, are not desirable partners and some are, but I will tell you that those two, the, the guy and the gal up in the left hand corner, by about uh, challenge four had developed a team system and they were working together and they finished strong. Now we wanted to tell you about the Sherpa. Because this is a world tour, we found the um, Sherpa definition. Uh, the Sherpa is actually us and the students have to show us each completed challenge. So um, they had to come to us and show us that, that, that they have finished what they need to finish and that explains why they have to do work in collaboration. So one of the goals of the project, huge goal, is collaboration. So we explain that once they get their answers, they need to bring them to us. If they're correct, we'll stamp their passport and we will give them their next challenge card out of the envelope. So they don't get to carry that envelope around with them. They also have to clean up and reset that station that they're working at for the next group. They don't want to leave those neckties tied. One of the challenge card is tying a necktie in a Windsor knot. 
and so they're at the White House and they're going to a state dinner and they have to wear a tie and so they have to learn how to tie a tie with their partner so you don't want to leave those things done you don't want to leave the table set the table setting done you don't want to leave the map open to the right page or you don't want to leave your work on the desktop of your computer so that's a huge part of this too is that that it's their responsibility to uh, not let other groups get the answers. And that goes back to what we were saying with organization. Different teams are hitting different challenges at different times. So you might have uh, tying the tie as your second challenge. Uh, team 12 might have tying the tie as their fourth or fifth challenge. It just varies. Yeah. So the Sherpa needs to have the supplies ready. Uh, we have a supply station picture that we'll show you. These are the items that we had to have on them. We had to have place, place settings, and actually I had two of them just in case. Origami paper had to be cut. The neckties had to be on the supply station. They needed an atlas, a globe, and a map. Also, uh, what Kelly's saying too is we found out that one place setting wasn't enough. Yeah. A one tie is not enough. Uh, we had to have a uh, kind of double, remember we're working with 25 students, uh, we had to have double some of these um, supplies so that the students had didn't have to wait to uh, do their particular challenge. It was a lot of preparation to get all the cards ready for each team ahead. We had to have the students paired, we had to have the passports run off and hold it up and have a stamp and a stamp pad ready or stickers ready to go. I will tell you that I visited um, Goodwills to find my place settings. They're not out dishes out of my house. <laughs> I went to Goodwill and found the dishes that we required and uh, silverware and I had one place setting that was kind of uh, plastic picnic dishes and one that was very very fancy china and the kids uh, got to pick which one they wanted to do. One had a cloth napkin, one had a paper napkin. Uh, I'll tell you that we have uh, learning coaches and the learning coach happened to be working over by the table where the kids were setting their table. And she said it was hilarious to hear the kids talk about, I never knew this butter knife, I've never seen a butter knife before. Where does this come from? What do we do with this? And Of course they had to look it up on the internet to find what a place setting looks like Then they had to physically go to the dishes and set them out properly and I will tell you that not every group passed the first time when I as a Sherpa would come and look at their place setting it wasn't correct and they would have to go back and redo it and rethink. Um, it says here origami paper. I did not invest in origami paper. My school has colored, uh, prop, uh, colored copy paper. I just laid out several sheets of colored paper on the table. I did not cut it into squares. That is something they had to figure out on Oops, their own. I, I could have done that. I should have done that. Yeah. Have done that. <laughs> they had to work on that themselves. Okay. So here's one picture of a supply station, and you can see the ties there on the right, and I guess the atlas and the map. Those big bags are the place settings with the dishes in them. Um, Kelly said they had to clean up their area and put it away. That means when they were done setting the table, they had to put all the dishes back into the plastic bag. When they were done with the ties, as Kelly said, they had to untie them and put them flat on the table. And over there by the sign, you can see my flat copy paper. It was just copy paper out of the copier. Couple of funny stories. <laughs> Uh, this was right before Thanksgiving in one school, and so one gal actually went home and she got to set the table for Thanksgiving in a very formal manner, which her mom was very impressed with, and they had never done that before. So that was a neat story. And then also, um, one of our fifth grade girls tied her older high school brother's tie for the Christmas dance. Nobody in their family <laughs> knew how to tie a tie, even the dad. And so she was the one that tied Trey's tie for the dance. I thought that was a neat story too. Which uh, I think emphasizes being lifelong learners for the students. Uh, they, they learned as they went through this that these weren't just classroom activities that they had to, to perform to just get done. 
they were things that they could apply to their life and to their learning. And I like how you're connecting now, it to mean, being in the. I like how you're connecting it to the library. Taught me to do this too, so that in the future yeah, they, would, exactly. they would think of the library when they want to figure out how to do something. Yeah, they think yeah. about how do I look that up? Mm -hmm. How do I look that up? Where am I going to go to find out how to do that? Now, as you're traveling around the world in the library, I printed up uh, little pictures here. This is uh, one of the challenges is. Uh, has to do with the Amazon River and these uh, are just laminated eight and a half by eleven pictures that I printed up and they were posted throughout my library everywhere they're not in one place they're all over the library so when you got done with your particular challenge you took your little avatar and taped it to the challenge so you can see here that uh, the zebras and the parrots and the elephants have um, finished this particular challenge, but not all 12 groups did. So as you walked around the library on any given day, uh, you would see some uh, pictures that were pretty empty and some that had lots and lots of avatars on them, which brings us to another point. Uh, other teachers in other classrooms in the library, we had, had a lot of what are you guys doing in there? Kindergarten. What, what's happening in the library? What, what, what is this? Lots of questions were generated um, by having these posters up and seeing the kids moving around the library. It was a very successful get up and get around and move around type project also. This is another way another librarian chose to track the progress through the races. Um, students just move their avatars as they progress through the challenges. And so this was just a different way that uh, Hallie chose to do hers. Um, I also chose to do my 12 challenges this way with the avatars. So it's open to change. As we said, we were utilized the entire library, and these pictures show how students are working at the tables, using the dictionary, they're working at the computer, <laughs> looking up things. Uh, this, the little boy with the Nike shirt, you can see, his, see how intense his neighbor is helping him out. And then they're back in the stacks over there on the left. Try, they had to find a joke book. <laughs> I learned a lot of jokes, I have to tell yeah, you. <laughs> yes. They, they had to find a joke book and come and tell their Sherpa a couple of jokes. So um, the entire library is utilized during my classroom time with my students is about 45 minutes. During this 45 minutes it is very loud and very chaotic and a lot of movement. No one is sitting still at any one point. Even the students looking up in the computers are talking to each other and pointing out things and saying yes 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 that's it or no that can't be right lots and lots and lots of collaborating collaborating and discussion I did have to warn all the teachers in the building that during the library challenge it was going to be a very active learning library it wasn't going to be a quiet situation and some teachers did choose to go other places sometimes <laughs> with smaller groups of students where maybe they worked in the library uh, previous weeks but they they certainly learned that this was a real yeah loud active activity now I will tell you that uh, I laid out the oh <laughs> some of the challenges were more difficult than others. You can see these two girls; they spent two class periods, two weeks, working on how to tie a tie. And when they finally figured it out, they were so <laughs> excited. Um, that tells me I was what I was going to tell you is that I organized this before the kids would come in in the morning. So I would go through and find out what challenge they were on. I would take that out of the envelope and put it on top of the envelope so that the group 12 knew which challenge to start with. They knew which one they hadn't completed. They knew which one they had to redo. Their passports I kept folded in the envelope. I did not let the passports leave the library. They stayed in the envelope. So when the students came to the library that particular day that was their day, everything that was, was there right there for them. 
uh, it took probably how many weeks did you do this? Mine was almost six. Mine, yeah, I was going to say six, six weeks. Yeah. So six times coming to the library. It's in our schools they come once a week for that 45 minute classroom. Um, that varies in the schools in Kearney. Some have longer class times, some have shorter class times. Some of us took longer, more weeks. Some of us took lesser weeks. Um, we had to keep on task, but the students were, did not have to be reminded, get busy. I never once had to go around and say, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? They, Mine actually ran to the library were, during the Amazing Race to get started. They yeah. were very excited about this project. And when they finally got towards the end, um, some of them were expressing disappointment that it was going to end. They wanted to keep doing this kind of activity. They enjoyed themselves so much. And Kelly, I think, mentioned it at the start. Um, I don't think they realized that they were meeting all those 21st century skills that we had planned and put in place. We knew what they were doing, but they were just having fun researching and finding things. And I want to talk about this for just a minute because I'm a real stickler on organization. I go to two buildings. I go from one elementary to another elementary in town, back and forth. And so to stay organized and to have things not move around when I'm out of that building, um, because people come in and use the library and want their own little space. So what I did with the supply station was I kept it on a table that had wheels on it, and I would just put everything on that supply station, all the passports, all the cards, all the supplies, and then I could roll that table around when I needed to. I would take that table after the fifth grade lesson and I'd go hide it in my storage closet so nobody would move anything off of it. I even had pencil sharpener and pencils and things like that on the table. And so I really felt like that was a huge part of my staying organized and not, not misplacing things and not losing things so the kids could get right to work when they came back uh, the next week. I didn't have the luxury of having a table on wheels so I had a great big apple box from Hy-Vee and after class period I boxed everything up in my box, put it in my storeroom and then the next week when it was time I got everything out of the box and put it on the supply table. So the supply table that you see here was only displayed during class. Then everything else was packed up and put away until the next class period. And of course, if you talk to other school librarians, you find other ways and other great ideas that they learn how to deal with doing the project and not misplacing things. And that's what that, remind, me. that reminds me, I was going to ask a question, I'm not sure if you had mentioned earlier, how many different elementary schools are in your system that were, that did this? How many, well, how many, how many, there's yeah, 12 different schools? Okay. One more, so it's 12 elementaries. Mm -hmm. All fifth graders throughout the district got the same project. Mm -hmm. And those 12 elementaries vary from uh, one class to three class to Four. No, one there's... unit schools, two unit schools, three unit schools, mm -hmm. and we have one four unit school guide. Wow. So we did it with a variety of classroom numbers, a variety of classroom time, mm -hmm. a, var a variety of uh, availability of the students. So it's very, very adaptable. And you said some of the different um, librarians at different schools did some of the tracking differently too. So yeah, it can yeah. be can be customized to however you want to run it. And Kelly mentioned that it's kind of a culmination of fifth grade activities, but I have to confess I started fifth grade with this project. I did not do it at the end of the year. I did it at the beginning of the year. But one of our other librarians did it at the end of the year. So there again, it, does, it didn't matter when you did it particularly. Um, the kids loved it no matter when they got it. <laughs> yeah. It's a cul uh, culmination of skills that they have been using since kindergarten. So it's a great way to send them out the door <laughs> to middle school. Laura Bush, one of our favorite librarians. librarians, of course, has a couple of quotes that we felt were great to share. School libraries help teachers teach and children learn. Children and teachers need library resources to succeed. 
and books, information technology, and school librarians who are part of the school's professional team are basic ingredients for student achievement. So. We have housed all the cards that we created at uh, my school, Park Elementary, and if you s use this link here, you can get to where those cards are stored. Um, I will tell you that the first one is all about Carney. We'd be happy to have you learn more about Carney, but <laughs> you can make your own card too if you want to. And uh, we are going to be adding a card. Uh, one of our um, school librarians uh, asked that we do something about lock, uh, locker pad padlocks that you put on the locker in middle school. How to work that combination lock. So we've got to think up a fun little activity in the world where you would have to unlock your padlock and then we're going to have that activity added. So we will have 13 cards, I think it will be, in our uh, library uh, challenge. Trisha's son said that was the worst part of middle school, going to middle <laughs> school, was learning how to open that locker and he was so nervous about it. So she thought if we put that in this challenge, it would, it would help those kids. We would like to show you some of the cards at this link at Park Elementary. But before we do that, are there any questions from anyone? Uh, let's see. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, if you do, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I can grab them from there. Or if you have a microphone, let me know, and we can just unmute you. Um, nothing came in while you were talking, I'll tell you that. Um, but I did just add the link to those cards that we have there to our delicious link. So afterwards, everybody will have a quick link to that as well. Um, and I can see all the, you know, this is a long list of all the cards here. So you have lots of things to look at yeah, so <laughs> or ideas. And I do like that idea of things that they might be having to do in the in the next school that isn't necessarily library related, but just middle school related, like the, the combination locks. Yeah. Um, you know, expand it to other things just advancement related, I guess it'd be maybe. Yeah. So can we move on then? Two, two things we'd like hey, to show you to, to end this. Uh, we'd like to show you the, the challenge cards just to give you an idea what some of the fun activities were. And then there's one other thing. I don't know if you've um, gone to teacher tools, but this is just a tool how to pair students easily in a real random way. Oh, I thought my link, oh yeah, Go back. I remember. My link is back here on the on the page where we were. There it is, telling you what you needed to have ready to go. So I just did this the first day, and you type the students' names in. Now, if you will take a look at the names that are here, it's kind of funny. Joe King, Jack Pot, <laughs> Hazel Nut. Okay, early bird, so you can point those out. But what you do is you type their names in. And so, War and Peace, you get rid of Sunny Day, and we would type our names in. And you can just use their first names. And you can actually save that and use it later. You can use it all year long. So you would save or I can just submit it right now and just show you so it comes up and you can spin and what it does is pair your students up. So this is a powerful teacher tool. There are others there if you've not used the teacher tools at classroom.net we would encourage you to go there. There are all kinds of classroom tools for you to use. All kinds of timers and all kinds of teacher tools there. Okay? So that was one thing we wanted to share. And the other thing we want to share is at the actual cards. Go back and do the last card. So Connie is going to take you to her school, uh, Park Elementary, where the cards are stored for you to download if you'd like to see them. So. This is not a live link, you just need to copy it. It 
should take you to my Park Elementary School library page and you can see here are the cards. Now there's so many of them because remember challenge card 5 for koala is different than challenge card 5 for lion because they're in a, an assortment of lists. So let us just share a couple of challenge cards with you, Connie. I don't know, just pick a winner and show them something besides yeah. one. I yeah. don't know what they... Oh, it's the high T. That's the uh -huh. high T one. The Fox Team Challenge 2 would be the, the high T. It's Fox Team Challenge yeah, thirty. Okay, we're at the Al Ali Coast in Italy. Go ahead and read it. This uh, this card was actually utilizing our library catalog, as you can see. They're in uh, Italy, and they are they have to, they're so lonely for their school. They have to look up one of the books in the school library, and so they had to do an author search, a title search, and a keyword search. So it um, gave them this, this particular activity, like I said, was using the library catalog. We had to find a book. As you can see, Tuesdays at the Castle is a Golden Sower book, so all of our libraries naturally have that book. So we could make a card for all of us working as a team together. Um, I would suggest, again, that you get with either librarians in your system or libraries in your area and work online. We did a lot of this work using Google. Uh, all these cards were made in Google, so they're easy to share, they were easy to save, they were easy to uh, copy. Copy. <laughs> yeah. Copy and paste. Yeah. Yeah. So once we made once we made one set, of course, we just copied and changed it. So it's not as huge of a project as it seems. So that is challenge three. So if we stay with this Fox team now, we'll show you some of the other challenges. Challenge three, challenge four for the Fox. Olé! It's the perfect time to arrive in Brazil. Even though the World Cup is over, the excitement is still in the air. Brazil is the world's fifth largest country, so before you set out on your travels, you must prove your ability to use different types of maps. So your challenge is to work with your partner on map skills by using three different maps. Write the answers on the back of your passport, of course, so we could check those answers. So using a globe, they had to discover what ocean borders Brazil. And then using a flat paper map, which we provided, they had to name the capital cities of the three countries that border Brazil. And then the third one was using the index in the Nystrom Junior Geographic Atlas, they had to find the city of Tacoma, Brazil. And once you locate it on the map, they had to bring that and show us the answer to the teacher. Something um, that we didn't think about until after we got started, because I did this one, one of the first activities I did with fifth grade. We needed answer cards for the Sherpa. <laughs> Oh, yes, so, yes. So after my first class, I had to go back and look at all the cards and print up answers. And then I laminated yeah. those and put those on a little ring <coughs> so that I had the answer cards for all of the activities. One of the other things that we do have and why we could do this particular challenge is that the curriculum office did buy a little cart that has flat uh, maps on them. They have six globes on them, and they have that the Nystrom Atlas on it also. So every school was provided with one of those little carts that's either housed in the library or housed in a fourth grade classroom. And so we used those for this project. So once again, that was one, one of the keys that everybody had that resource, and, and we could use it. Our activities were... Um geared around us working together, meeting 21st century uh, skills and the um, multiple intelligences. So here is challenge six. This is where they actually have to go look up how to 
learn how to set a basic table place. So hail to the chief, travel funds are running low, you've taken a job to set tables for the White House state dinner, research how to set a table setting to impress the president or other world dignitaries. So I apologize, I got that wrong. I thought the White House one was the tying of the tie. That's right. So each team member had to pick up one place setting from the supply station, and then they had to find a basic table setting and, and set that up. I like how the challenge is also, what they have to do is just you know setting a place, but it's kind of tosses in there things like, did they even know that the White House has state dinners? And will that maybe get them to think <laughs> about that? I mean, I don't know if yeah. I did as a fifth grader had a clue that that was a thing. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. It was really fun to create the challenges and to write up that little story that's at the mm -hmm. top to try and think of uh, ways to make the challenge more fun than just go find a place setting. Oh, here we go. I had it wrong. The Amazing Library Race goes to <gasps> meet Prince ah. William and Princess Kate, and all Let's gentlemen. Let's wear a tie, also, yes. <laughs> royalty. So they had to pick up the ties, and they had to go find the proper way to tie a Windsor knot. Now, mm. a lot of kids went to YouTube and watched, and uh, the really bad part of that was um, that Windsor knot on YouTube wasn't exactly like the directions that we gave them to select www.tieatie.net hmm. and all the winds are not. So some of them had to learn the hard way. You must follow the directions on the card. I, so. I also had one little girl go to a YouTube where her brother had posted how to tie a tie, and she watched her brother's. Hmm. On how to tie a tie. But it had to be that wins or not, see. So because there's lots of different ways to tie a tie, yes. Yeah. Which is what something they found out too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have any questions come in? Um, no, not yet. Nobody seems to have anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, I did have one question I was thinking about. Now this is something you said you or this was arranged for the fifth graders specifically to move, you know, to prepare them for um, both lifelong learning, moving up in school. Have you thought about expanding it beyond them, like for either in, a younger version for introducing the younger kids into the library, or even for the older kids um, in the um, upper grades for you know doing something similar for them in, in their libraries? Not really. We have this almost one time. Of course, it's just one year old. Mm -hmm, right. I think what's happening is we, because we teach K-5 in our schools, we like to keep activities specific to each grade, so each grade has something to look forward to and something that's special to them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we are working on a library search by the numbers activity for fourth graders, and that is a, it's an activity where they have to look up how many bones in your hand plus how many planets are in the solar system equals whatever that equals. Yeah, and mathematically that has to work out. So they're, uh, and we're teaching them the search skills in, in um, uh, Google because our school is a Google school. Mm -hmm. And they'll be working in fourth grade. That will be their special project. So how to use how to learn how to use that research tool in their Google account. Mm -hmm. and then, Third grade, we have uh, created activities that uh, go with the golden sewers that our third graders log into Google Classroom and they have all their activities in um, uh, Google Classroom. So like I said, we try to sp think of specific activities, not because we don't want fourth graders to do this, just because we want fifth grade to have something special that's for fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yes, understandable. Yeah. And guaranteed those fourth graders have heard about this. Oh, yes. So yeah. Now and come hopefully you're looking forward yeah. to it. <laughs> They'll say, when do we get to do the amazing race? <laughs> nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. This had to do with flags. This one, they were supposed to find the country with the largest number of Internet users. And that, all, that information is all easy to find. It's, we didn't. Uh, purposely put in challenges that were hard to, to do. Um, we did challenges that used our um, resources. And this one, we have World Book Encyclopedia online at our school. Mm -hmm. There again, we were using the 
resources that we have at our school. So if you don't have that, you just have to change it to adapt to whatever resources you have. Sure. And in, <clears throat> in Kids World Book Encyclopedia, there's an easy place where you go and compare places, and it compares two countries. And Internet Users comes right up. It's one of the things that they have to read that mm -hmm. it's one of the findings. Of course, maybe they learned this in fourth grade during an activity, during a research project where they used World Book Encyclopedia. They've already compared places and compared countries. They've used that comparison spot in World Book already. So this is revisiting that. But they have to find the two countries with flags of um, red, black, and white and then name the countries on the passport, and then they have to find the number of internet users and circle mm -hmm. which has more, which country has more. So, right. nice. um, I would add that uh, Kelly and I are easy to get to if you go to Kearney Public Schools, uh, click on the libraries, and um, they, it lists uh, under staff, you can find uh, the different um, Park staff, Emerson staff happens to be where I am, but each school has this website and you can go right to the staff list and find our name so you don't have to memorize anything. Um, our emails and pictures are right there. We are. I believe we're under specialists. Are you under yep. specialist? Third from the bottom. Yep, right yep. over here. There it is. Yep. Yeah. We also have those library websites that we have spent a lot of time on. And so, um, Right here is your park library. So, all kinds of great information there, too. Next time out, we can show you what we did for Golden Sowers with our um, third graders. Third yeah. graders. Oh, sure. We definitely have you on again. <laughs> our, our, our Golden Sower web pages. Oh, that one, too. Oh, yeah, to we've got, got good third and fourth grade activities <laughs> going on, too. So, <laughs> We work hard, so we love to share. Oh yeah, and that's great. I'm glad you guys have this have have this stuff out there that you have the resources for other people that they can you know take and modify. And it's nice that, like as you were saying, when you're showing some of those cards, the challenge cards, that they are very easily um, easy to um, modify for whatever other schools may have available as their resources. Um, the information you're looking for is you know going to be. Universal, of course, what flags and which countries and whatnot. But you just got to figure. You know, it's very simple to you know come make it fit into what your um, school is offering for the for the kids. Yeah. So just showing a couple of um, places you can find us here in the Northeast Library. Okay. Cool. Any questions? Then? Any other? Questions? No, it doesn't look like anybody have any last minute questions before we wrap up for the day. Um, as you can see, you can get in touch with uh, Connie and Kelly, and I'm sure any of the other staff that were involved in this at their schools to see what they were doing. Uh -huh. and all the resources that are on the park webpage there, as I said, I've got those linked, um, the link to that in our show links too. Um, and also, will you guys send me this can, um, link or wherever you have your presentation so we can give people a link to that as well? Absolutely. Sure. Either send me the actual slideshow or wherever you have it online. I see you've got it up on your Google Docs there. Yeah. That URL will work just fine too. And we'll have and that I, included. For I would stress again of how important it is that we uh, work together in a team because uh, Kelly and I are the ones that usually get to present, but uh, we could not do this without Hallie and her creativity and Trish with her ideas and Mary with her resources. I mean, each one of us has a strength that brings to the table. And we really do appreciate the team effort that goes into this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, especially with that many schools that you guys are all running. <laughs> yeah. Keeping up with all those all those children. <laughs> Very impressive. All right, doesn't look like any last minute urgent questions have come in. Do you guys have anything you want to wrap up with? Email us if you have questions. Yep, absolutely. All right, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen here and where are we there it is and this is just what I was talking about I um, have saved all the links that they mentioned the standards um, the book that you had there at Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences, linked to Park and Lentry, where they have all the cards, and that um, classtools.net website with a random picker and all the other resources that are available there um, 
So this will be included in the show notes um, when the recording is posted. So thank you very much, Connie and Kelly, for being with us here this morning and sharing. Yeah. Well, I think what we'll do, uh, would it work for you to, for us to put, how, how, what's the best way for us to get the link to you? Uh, um, you can just email it to me and I can add it to when we put the presentation up. Okay, okay. we'll that do works. it. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem. All right. So that will wrap it up for this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, the recordings will be available here on our Encompass Live website where we have our upcoming shows, but we have right here our archived Encompass Live sessions where, um, let's see if we had last week's. Yeah, we have a recording which links to our YouTube channel. Presentation here goes to, this particular one goes to our SlideShare, but we'll link to wherever you put them. You're on a Google Docs, we'll go there. And any links that are available, this just had a single link but um, I believe uh, here, yeah, we'll have the same kind of thing, the links to our delicious account with everything all collected together. So that'll be available uh, most likely later this, later this afternoon. I'll send everybody who attended an um, email letting you know when the recording is available and ready there. Um, you can watch it again if you want to or share it with any of your colleagues who are unable to join us this morning. Um, other than that, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is The Secret Art of Patron-Driven Ebook Acquisition, A Snapshot of Cost and Control. Um, this is Dana Longley, who is at SUNY Empire State College in actually my hometown, Saratoga Springs, New York. <laughs> um, that is where I'm from originally. And she um, handles their library instruction and information literacy. SUNY Empire State College is an online uh, university. And they have been doing patron driven acquisition for their ebooks. And she's done a really great um, event analysis of all of that. So if you're doing ebooks and wondering about how you can integrate this kind of thing into your collection, development, definitely sign up for next week's show or any of the other shows that we have coming up on our calendar. So other than that, thank you very much for attending and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.